Hey there hunters, welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. Today we're going to do another Let's Talk About video where I discuss and review games I'm currently playing. On today's docket we have Pal World, and I wanted to take my time with this one because I really wanted to get past that initial honeymoon phase of the game before I decided on reviewing it. And I'm currently now about 100 hours in and just hit level 50, and I've finished pretty much the entire game and the bosses at this point, and I wanted to discuss my feelings about the game, both the good and the bad. And I want to preface this by also saying that I was hugely skeptical about this game. I had made a video before Power World came out describing all my worries, and while I was pretty accurate on most of them, I was still surprised at how much I did actually enjoy my time in Power World. So, with that out of the way, let's start with the good. So, Power World is definitely an unexpected hit, but it's pretty easy to see why, to be honest. I personally love the concept of Pokemon with guns from the get-go, that's always been my jam, but for other players, I actually think the biggest selling point to Power World was actually Pokemon Legends Arceus. I feel that Arceus was a big letdown for Pokemon fans, and while I enjoyed it, I thought the ideas were good, I just was hoping that they would kind of expand that further and take the concepts to like the next generation through the next Pokemon games and kind of refine it, and they kind of took some examples and ideas, but you know, Pokemon's changing at a snail's pace. And I think a lot of the Pokemon fanbase just wants more from the franchise. And that's where Power World kind of delivered, where Game Freak would not. Because Arceus, and well even Scarlet and Violet, are just lacking on the features, besides the same old Pokemon experience that I feel a lot of people are just kind of getting tired of. And Power World is a Pokemon game to a degree, to a much lesser degree than actual Pokemon, but it's just, it's much more than just Pokemon with guns. Because come on, survival style games aren't new, they're a dime a dozen, and even a survival game with Pokemon, like you know, Minecraft mods and stuff, they never really took off. Arc never really took off, like yeah it's popular, but it's not this popular. But Power World nailed it so hard, and I'm not really here to simp for Power World. Look, I can tell you straight up that Power World is a janky hot mess. It's got a ton of features and tons of mechanics, but basically everything's incredibly shallow or doesn't work properly. But even so, it's still selling like a Pokemon game, for real, it's like 19 million users now. It's crazy that the bar is just that low, but the demand that high for a new Pokemon experience. So let me just kind of go in and explain what's going on with Power World. So the gameplay loop of Power World in my eye is very engaging, much more so than Pokemon Arceus, because there's just so much to do at all times, and you're always wanting to do the next something. It doesn't even feel like a chore. Like, even when you're not playing Power World, you're still thinking about what you need to do next. While most survival games make you keep track of basics like food and water, and then just kind of farming materials to make stuff, Power World takes the survival aspects into a different direction. Most of your food basics and like other normal items can be entirely automated with your pals and at your bases, and that leaves you in a position of playing the foreman, and so the game ends up feeling like Sims, where instead of managing basic survival needs in a survival game, you're managing your pals, making sure that they're doing their jobs, getting the right pals for the job, making sure that they're fed, not getting stuck or stuff or dying. You need to be protecting your base from invaders, and transferring materials from base to base, and forging new items, and this whole industrialization that keeps you doing micro-tasks that just take a few seconds at a time, but it's just constant loop that's also feeling rewarding at every step of the process, and that's why you can sink hours into this game and feel like no time has passed at all. Seriously, just going around your base and collecting all your little resources that your pals are gathering up and forging your new items, and, you know, making some Pokeballs, and then feeding your pals and making sure everything's good, that's going to take you 20 minutes and you're not even going to realize it. Leveling and progression is also very rewarding, which helps drive that gameplay loop forward. The players do gain XP from basically every task. Catching pals, killing pals, crafting, farming, whatever. And it helps you drive you closer to the next level. And leveling up is like heroin. There's huge power spikes when you level up and get new weapons or armor, new saddles or mounts, new technology, and every single time you level up, you get that endorphin rush and just have to scramble off to craft new things, or go out and explore to get new materials to craft new things, and you're just keeping this vicious cycle going forever. Now, speaking of exploration, that's again one of this game's biggest selling points. Power World's map is huge, and it's truly an open world game, and again, unlike what Arceus could deliver. While not graphically the best looking game around, it gets the job done, and it still looks three generations ahead of what Game Freak will be producing anytime soon. Now exploring this huge map that's just full of fog of war is exciting, because you never really know what's around the next corner. The map is full of all sorts of collectibles, bosses, dungeons, chests, base locations, new pals to collect. It's easily one of the best aspects of Power World. 
and the player also gets access to a ton of travel options with mounts, both ground and flying, as well as fast travel points. You also need to be managing your temperatures, you have to make sure you have certain gears for exploring the snowy mountains, the scorching deserts, and the raging volcanoes. There's also plenty to explore and see, and while the textures and the graphics aren't amazing, it's still fine, and it gets carried hard by the amazing draw distance and the actually decent lighting. I love flying around the world and just checking out the landscapes, plus searching for good base locations is a great pastime, while also looking for your leaf monk statues in random chests, because again, there's always something around every corner. Now moving on, let's talk about performance, which is one of my biggest fears I had going into Power World just because the recommended specs were crazy fucking high, but I am glad to say that the game actually runs very well, both on my actual main PC, my secondary PC, as well as my laptop, and that's a big plus. I haven't heard anyone talk about the performance of the game at all, so it must be solid across the board, right? So, in a sea of bad PC games and bad PC port performances and all that stuff, Power World's actually good, so yay. And then, so while this is an early access game, and there's definitely a limit to the content and how deep all the systems are, there's still plenty of content here for you to dump 100 hours or more in without running into any walls, which is an excellent start to a survival game. The Syndicate Leader fights make for great milestone accomplishments to help push the player forward with an actual goal of you know, getting all that stuff done. So yeah, there's tons of good things about Power World to enjoy, and for a $27 game in early access, this is totally worth it. But of course, pretty much everyone knows that by now since it's sold like 19 million copies already. Maybe not that quite, let's say 10, but you know, 19 million users. So anyway, so yeah, Power World's getting my stamp of approval for sure. That being said, there are still tons of cons and issues with Power World that I want to talk about. So that was all the good stuff. And I can't grab on the game too hard because it has that stupid early access shield tag. So any criticism will be met by people saying, well, it's early access, it'll get fixed and polished later, which is not always true, so I have to grab about the things that there are, so let's just start down that rabbit hole. So of course, first is going to be the horrendous clipping. Your pals, NPCs, everything. There is so much clipping into places that you can't go, should go, but can't, underground, into walls, into buildings, you name it. This affects literally every aspect of the game, and it's easily one of the biggest issues with Power World. Your pals get stuck under your base, they drown themselves, they clip out of pathable places so they can't find their way back and starve to death. It goes on and on. Enemy pals get stuck in terrain if you use explosives, they go flying across the map, it's just horrendous. And Pocket Pirate doesn't need to address this like ASAP, because while funny, you can only take so much BS before it gets annoying. And constantly having to reset your pals at base gets old pretty fast. And actually, as I'm reading and writing this script and putting it out, they actually just put a patch out on PC, which uh, did just this. It addressed a lot of this pathing and clipping issues, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, the animations are also a complete mess but I think most of that is getting amplified by the clipping. While there are some good animations, most pals and enemies only have a few animations and they look really stiff most of the time, and often don't react to their attacks or getting hit. I mean, this isn't a big issue, as it's like Pokemon has the same issues as well, but Power World's animations just feel a lot less animated. And, you know, when they work and they sync up, it's good, but, you know, a lot of the times it looks like it's really half-assed. So paired on to that, all the AI of enemies, both pals and syndicates, is absolutely brain dead and pretty much nothing feels like it's actually alive. Everything has very specific pathing and interactions, which takes away a lot of the immersion if you had any despite all the clipping and other issues. So AI definitely needs to get fixed. And then there's the tech. While the early game feels pretty good, Power World scales weaponry super hard past level 30, and weapons completely trivialize pretty much every encounter and make pals obsolete, partly due to the AI and pathing making them unreliable. But guns just deal so much freaking damage that I stopped using pals for fighting long ago. They're just a buff and movement machines for me for now. And unfortunately, these weapons and armors are extremely lacking. Everything is just like a flat scaling power and defense number that goes up with almost no other options to use anything besides just the highest rank of whatever you have. Your armors come in either default, cold, or hot resistance, pretty much from the beginning all the way to the end of the game. Helmets are just helmets, and weapons are just stronger and stronger as they go, despite having rarities and stuff. They just get flat, you know, defense or damage bonuses. And often the next tier of armor or weapons is better than the epic version of the lower tier, so there's not much point of them. It just feels extremely linear, with no real creativity available to the player. Stats only change the player's output minorly, weight and stamina seemingly to be the most effective. Now, I don't like the atomization and power progression of Power World at all in late game, it's just too easy. I honestly think like the 1-30 to brackets probably the best time you're going to have with Power World. 
once you get past like you know that point you're getting fully automatic weapons and flying mounts and going around you're going to start really seeing all the cracks in the walls in this game and then the dungeons and the raid bosses are also the same every time pretty much with no deviation which gets boring really fast I don't really want to go into it too much, but you'll know when you play the game and start going to farm recipes. It's the same layouts, it's the same bosses, same attack, same everything. You just run through with a shotgun, pump pump, they're dead, keep going. And lastly, flying, while fun, it trivializes most of the game, and because the AI is pretty jinky as well, it just, I mean, there's no reason not to fly around and kill everything before they can even attack you. Now, I personally don't care about all the claims of like AI generated pals and art or heavily borrowed inspiration from Pokemon. None of that matters to me at all, mostly because AI art is the future and people are mad about it now because it's costing jobs, that's literally the only reason. That's just kind of how technology advances, can't avoid it forever, so that's meh for me. But also, the heavily inspired content is a big okay whatever to me as well. Fan made Pokemon games using actual Pokemon are out there and nobody bats an eye, so and there's tons of other monster collecting games that have mons that look eerily similar to Pokemon or Digimon and stuff. Like, look, I know people want to throw the shade at Power World for being lazy or stealing content, but like, hey man, if Game Freak could start delivering good Pokemon games, wouldn't we even be talking about Power World or batting in an eye? It would have never taken off the way it did. Power World is filling a demand that was not being met. Yeah, that's on everyone else at this point. So, I'm talking all that up to Pocket Pair capitalizing on an untapped market, and they struck gold. Now, altogether, Power World's ideas, musics, effects, gameplay elements, landscapes, pretty much everything in the game has appears to be lifted from other games, making Power World this huge, like, amalgamation of ideas. And, like, I, I don't think they stuck the landing on pretty much any of the game aspects, because there's just bugs and problems in basically every facet of the game. But what Power World did manage to throw together still holds up and actually provides a solid experience for tons and tons of hours. And I do feel like that's more of players having such a low bar for a successful game these days, as more and more games come out bad than good. So something half to bake can somehow seem amazing. It's weird, right? And I feel like Power World's success, again, is largely due to Game Freak's failures. And maybe this is actually going to light a fire under their asses to make a good Pokemon game. But we'll have to wait a few years before we see about that. So for now, I'm going to say Power World is a big win, and a Pocket Pair sticks to the roadmap and actually delivers on the content updates, since they have the money to do so now, then Power World should be a great pickup now or in the future whenever hopefully a lot of the problems are fixed. And even for the week that it's been out, Power World has actually had some really nice updates, and PC just got a big patch to push out to address a lot of the clipping and pathing issues. So like, if the devs keep putting all this effort into the game, it's only going to pick up more steam, which is great. I'm really excited to see the future of Power World, and the other open world survival Pokemon style games that are undoubtedly going to spawn from this success. So yeah, thanks. That's going to be all for me. Thank you all for watching. Peace and good luck out there, hunters.